Hey everybody, Bridget Lynn Dolgoff, Conscious of Economics and Urban Farm Project. Anyway, I've been super, super busy. Uh, first thing on the list is I'm going to be putting together, let's see, probably like uh, January, uh, February, March, April, and maybe first part of May. It just depends on how the days work out, but... Um, it's going to start October, I mean, uh, January 7th, 2023, and I'm going to be putting together Rudolf Steiner, um, Gerda, uh, phenomenology course for ages 18 to 18, really good for homeschoolers. It's going to be out of Yarrington, Nevada. I'm working on the blog. Um, so if you're interested, please go to my blog, which is coe-llc.com, and eventually I'll have a blog on. Anyway, the course will be, uh, doing spiritual science and study of nature, and I have a friend and also one of my teachers, um, a man named Everett, who is going to be, um, doing herb walk type stuff, and whatever else that he wants to do for like a couple classes um, for us and the kiddos. So if you're a homeschooler or a Waldorf or um, even, you know, regular school and you want to put your kids in something else, it'll be like, I think like every three weeks on Saturday, starting January 7th, 2023. And it's probably going to be like a two-hour event. It'll be an outside, uh, you know, um, hands-on develop brain developmental practice with some aspect of nature. And then there'll be an hour inside um, to do some drawing and also have kind of... Um, you know, like an open discussion about, you know, what may have been learned that day or led to inspired new thinking in agriculture. So, yes. So, anyway, I uh, went to Steiner College and studied biodynamics. I did phenomenology course and nutrition um, and some other stuff there like 15 years ago and even though I do mostly urban type, you know, food and farming um, and have done some consulting and building and done large scale kind of farm stuff and startups. Um, I end up kind of in a more of an urban domain. And um, so anyway, that's what we're going to talk about today because it's part of the stuff that I've been doing. Um, so, you know, we're at the base of Sierra Nevada's here in the desert. And so it's been getting down to like 20 degrees. And right before it all happened, which is like three days ago, I finally found, I outsourced some panels and off a bone yard on a property, baling wire, and uh, I had a tarp. So I'm putting a big tarp over it for right now. So... Today I have to look at it. Today's going to be the warmest day until like Saturday. So I need to water it. Um, and then I need to let it have a little sunlight. And then I'm probably going to cover it till, um, like I said, Saturday. And then I'll open it back up. But it's doing pretty good. It was pretty warm in there. I got, got to knock down the moisture a little bit. So that's one of the things that's going to happen today. Because if it does get really, really cold, you know, moisture, you know, will settle on the plants and they'll freeze. But so far we're doing super good. Even stuff I transplanted. And so I took a quarter of my kale bed and I transplanted some parsley that was still growing that wasn't going to seed. Um, my carrot over there is still working on seeding, so... Just gonna allow it to continue to do what it does. Um, I do have a couple carrots over there, but I think I'll probably leave those for next year so they can go to seed. 
but it's kind of a quick up, you know, and the panels are holding together pretty strong and against the wind because the wind was pretty fierce. Um, and, uh, and my transplants of my shard plants, I mean, if I can keep those guys rocking, you know, they'll grow until next year sometime. But they're also transplants. And then I have my broccolettes coming up. I got some patches of broccolettes that I started um, in the main garden that was around here. And um, I dug them up and put them in there. And then I've also seeded in with the broccolettes some um, Brussels sprouts. So, you know, it's always an experiment. Oh, and I have one great heirloom lettuce left. One of my favorite heirloom lettuce. Just tough as nails and amazing. But I thought this was pretty amazing. So I kind of wanted to talk about... Oh, the only thing that didn't survive was the tomato plant. The tomato plant, yeah, is hidden in there, but it did kind of, kind of go just a little too cold for it. And... I'd say 95% of it looks like it got froze. So, you know, but the parsley's holding up really good, even though I transplanted it. It's rocking. So, yeah, so we're doing good. All right, so today I'm just going to put sheets, old sheets, kind of on these corners because I do have an old tarp and it, 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 you know, is kind of ripping at it and I need it to last, you know. <laughs> Let's see, October, November, December, January, February, March, probably till at least March. <laughs> so, <laughs> eek, no. <laughs> but this is my attempt to do a little bit of winter food. Uh, I wanted to build some cold frames. I just didn't get enough wood. I do have the tops for them. So that's kind of like what's going on. So we'll see what happens. It's always kind of an experiment. Um, so I kind of want to leave kind of with this idea. I want to talk a little bit about Rudolf Steiner. And if you haven't really, you know, explored some of his agriculture and whatever else in his scientific work, it's so worth doing. He has a book called Esoteric Science that is so unbelievable. I mean, the guy was just so unbelievably brilliant and talented on so many different levels. So, Esoteric, it's a huge book. I took a class and we studied half of it. It was just so incredible how this reality, you know, came to be, which it'll just blow your mind. Um, but in biodynamic farming, you know, and kind of the sciences, we kind of talk about five elements, or I guess... So there's water, fire, earth, air, and then there's something that Steiner calls warmth. And human bodies um, and living beings, I guess, would emanate this warmth. But I was also thinking about it, you know, it's all about kind of alchemy. And one thing I really tell people is that when I studied here's my biodynamic compost piles. When I studied biodynamic composting and saw the results, it was the first time that I understood alchemy. And I've talked about it when I had radio before, but um, it was actually mind-blowing. So, uh, warmth. So, even though it's been getting down so cold... By being, you know, covered, and not even in a greenhouse, just like, you know, with a tarp. And, I mean, these panels are pretty hard because they come from garage, you know, garage doors that weren't needed. Here's my big tarp. And, you know, I also dig the dirt up around, you know, so that there's no air blowing in the bottom. And then I'm trying to work on, you know, these cracks in the thing, but, you know, it's a little bit at a time. So, you know, today I just wanted to talk about warmth, you know, 
all most of these plants needed was warmth. And you know, it kind of leads me to thinking about like if we you know, like tomatoes are kind of a spring, summer kind of food, right? But, you know, like stuff that's hardier, like some of this heirloom lettuce, you know. This stuff is even still hanging in there. And then I've got these, this guy, and some of these little heirloom lettuces. They're just thriving, even though it's been getting down to 21. I mean, even this guy, he's going to seed. He's a lettuce, and he's a little, he's a lot more sensitive than a kale. And he freezes and kind of comes back. And then here's one there. I mean, he, this one is not doing so good. You can tell by the color. Okay, but, <clears throat> you know, I've got quite a bit, you know, south-facing sun right here. And I just kind of wanted to show you, like, the degree of warmth. And it, it, it may not be, like, super significant. But I've got this number one mirroring effect. So I've got the sun. Here's my old garden bed that had a lot of summer lettuce that didn't really make it. But I do have more fall lettuce that is still jamming. And the only thing I noticed with it is that it's super dry. So I'm going to water that today too. I'm trying not to create, you know, soil ice cube, which would really piss the plants off. But I was thinking about like the degree of warmth, like how many degrees of more of warmth does just this panel and the sun reflecting off of it give? Well, obviously a lot more than other parts. And I've just been really thinking about, like, you know, nutrition-wise, you know. You know, the more that we hybrid plants like lettuce and make them, you know, easy for teeth to chew. The plant really isn't pulling from its depths, you know, to actually create a great nutrition. And the lighter lettuce is just kind of like water and sunlight. But... The hardier lettuces or the hardier plants have to really dig for the nutrient. And I think they're a lot healthier because it's more like grasses, you know, back in the old days. Lettuce was a very hard weed to chew. And... You know, that's another thing that's wrong with our teeth is we do so little chewing, which we're not creating warmth. You know, the more we chew, the more we strike, you know, rocks together, our teeth. And that also creates warmth into, like, the food that we're eating. So, anyway, I was just thinking about warmth today. And that warmth doesn't take much. But... It is a really important factor in the solid, solid, we'll call it the carbon silica world. Rudolf Steiner says carbon decides the form. And any other plane of existence but physical is formless. Like you may have stuff like plasma and things like that they may show up in non-physical another thing we have is that the silica works with the carbon so the carbon creates the form the plant the seed soil microbes um, it creates our forms and so you can see how negative carbon is really not good for us and how it's kind of altering a lot of our forms, our physical forms, you start to see um, the forms like falling apart. And, uh, and then the silica that creates the structure, which is the bones and all of those nice things. And how important it is, you know, for them to work together here in the physical. So, the ice, 
the mineralized, you know, what do they call it? The crystallized water, you know, can impact the form of the plants in winter. Some, not as much. Some plants actually thrive on crystallization of water. But it can be a really hard force. So you have to have a strong form and a strong structure. Anyway, just kind of ranting at this point, but I better get watering. Um, and so that way there's not a lot of steam in there. And all of this stuff can carry on until Saturday. And then I'll let it get really warmed up. It's supposed to be 63 today. Then tomorrow's like 50. And I'm not going to open my cold frame. Um, until it gets back up to 60. Unless I have to. So I'm going to prepare it for five days. It should be good. And then water these outside guys too that have enough heat coming from the reflection here of this panel and then we'll check in and see what happens so anyway experiment in life if anybody's interested in the uh, kids course that's going to be hands-on in person um, starting uh, January 7th please email me b-r-i-d-g-e-n-i-t at gmail and um, yeah and look for the blog coe-llc.com will be the next blog I put up and uh, I'm working on it I'm working on the exact days and times and we have some people interested in providing the one hour venue uh, the inside part so yeah so and I have no idea what costs are going to be um, but this is what I've got I've got every three weeks we're going to do a course that has something to do with spiritual science and study of nature and agriculture and whatever else. We're just going to have to see what I can put together. It's going to be a winter-spring curriculum for um, children 18, 8 to 18. And it's going to be hands-on and then it's going to use right and left brain techniques that Gerda has developed to um, um, help children to use their critical thinking and, and really look at nature, right? Really take a look at it. And so I'm really looking forward to teaching it. Phenomenology for kiddos. All right. And um, yeah, so it's going to have a little bit of everything. And we're going to hopefully have a snack, too. And um, I'll be working on what all that is going to entail and um, getting all the help I need in order to pull it off. And we're asking that anyone interested, you know, Reno, Topaz, Mammoth, Bishop, Bridgeport, Earrington, Smith Valley, Sweetwater, uh, Schurz, Carson, Fallon, um, you know, uh, Hawthorne, um, any kids that would like to take this course, parents that would like to put them in the course, um, we would love to have them, and, um, and I can't wait, I can't wait to teach them about things that are, we overlook, right? Okay. Um, oh, and we'll have a, not only will we have the class, but I'm hoping um, that I will be able to order materials and whatever else and put things together for um, the three-week period. We're going to have, a, everyone will get a project um, to do. And so when we come back to the class, that'll be the first thing that we discuss was our three-week project and uh, how it worked out, if it didn't work out, um, what was learned, what happened. Um, yeah, so we're going to have these really amazing like projects like grow a seed in a cup or um, 
uh, the, I think the first thing that we're going to, my first three week project's going to be is I'm going to give everyone a, a peach seed and then I'll give them instructions on um, how to handle the peach seed, take it apart, what to do with it, where to put it, and wait for it to sprout. Because that project's going to be a three month one total uh, to get to the ends to the means, right? Until we can plant it in the ground. So. But anyway, things like that. I'm just super excited. I've just learned so much in my life about nature, um, being an herbalist and also nature lover and plant enthusiast and, you know, crazy seed collector that um, I really, really, and biodynamics, just everything that I've been involved with. I think that we can just have the funnest time doing, you know, the simplest, most amazing thing. So anyway, that's it. Anyway, get a hold of me. Contact me if you're interested. Putting it together. Just waiting for some stuff to come in. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks so much.